Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we've got a couple of interesting and fun mods to install in this Sony PS1. Um, so this was given to me by a customer of mine, and this is actually his childhood PS1, and just like so many other PS1s out there, the, the laser here is dead and it no longer reads any games. Uh, so what we're going to do to start is we're going to install this device right here. This is the Terra Onion mode. So this is an optical disc emulator, and it replaces that laser and allows you to install a hard drive or a SD card, and that lets you play any game that you wish um, from, from this device instead of through the laser. So, so yeah, this is a really great thing to install on the PS1, especially because so few of them are actually working these days. Uh, once we're done with that, though, we're going to take it a step up, and then we're going to install Black Dog Tech's PS1 Digital. Uh, this is a really amazing mod that taps into um, the, the chips directly and gives you a purely digital video and audio uh, signal from the PS1, and it allows you to output in 1080p. Uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. Unfortunately, these are not available for sale right now just due to the global chip shortage, but I'm hoping that later on this year there will be another round where people can purchase these. So, yeah, overall, this is a fairly challenging installation that involves a lot of steps, so I'm going to go through it with you guys step by step and show you how I do it. All right, let's get started. But before we get started, let me take a moment to thank PCBWay.com for sponsoring this week's episode. I'm constantly building open source projects as part of my work, and I can always count on PCBWay to manufacture high-quality PCBs that get to me quickly. And now, there are even more options available for PCB fabrication than ever before, including multi-layer PCBs and rigid flex PCBs. So, if you're designing new projects, then PCBWay has got you covered. Thanks again for your support, and now let's get back to this week's project. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly cover how to take apart the PS1. You really only need a Phillips screwdriver, and um, really all you need to do is just, as soon as you see a screw uh, on this main board here, you just got to remove it. To remove the disk drive, you have to just disconnect these two components here, and we're going to either toss this or set it aside, depends on what you want to do. And we're going to remove the controller PCB and the power supply. Um, and then, yeah, Sony very helpfully puts arrows in spots where there are screws, so this helps you with both disassembly and reassembly. So firstly, we're going to just take off this top RF shield here. And uh, so normally, the PlayStation has two components on it. So it has this heat shield, which I think goes, let's see, yeah, goes like this. And attached to it is this piece of copper tape, which goes right here. And this is all for RF shielding. This is not a heat sink. So um, you need to remove both of these components in order to install both of these mods. So I went ahead and uh, took them off. This you just literally peel off. With this, as long as you use your soldering iron or a... I, I often use my desoldering gun because it's just got a larger surface area. And you just heat up these pads and lift one by one. And you can just take these components out. Um, all right, so as you can see, I've already disassembled it, and we're going to start by taking out this motherboard and getting to work. Okay, so we're going to start with the mode installation, and first got to make sure that you have the right version of the PS1. So very specifically, you need a PU18 motherboard, and you can find those inside of PlayStations that have a model number of SCPH5501. So that's very easy to tell. If you just look on the underside of the console, you'll see the model number. All right, so the first order of business is we're going to start with this chip right here. This is the CD Digital Signal Processor, or DSP, and we've got to lift up a couple of pins on it um, in order to start the install. So this is very similar to what we do for the X station. It's just that there's one less pin that we have to lift. So um, I'll put a link in the description for the mode manual, and it'll show you exactly which pins you need to lift. So normally what I do is I use a little pick like this right here, and I've got my soldering iron, and right now I happen to have a fine tip, but you can also use uh, something larger like a chisel tip and it's fine. But basically what I wanna do is take my pick, wedge it in between the pins, and so I'm gonna just heat up the pad, and then lift. There we go. And this one came up nice and straight, and I'm going to bend it all the way up. This is just to prevent it from ever coming down and, you know, bumping into anything else or, or what have you. So I'm going to go ahead and lift all these pins. Okay. 
Okay, so now we've moved to the underside of the board, and what we're going to do now is we're going to install this quick solder board, otherwise known as a QSB, uh, onto the underside. And so this taps into a variety of different places on the board and sends everything out um, to this flex uh, cable point right here. And this also supplies power, I believe, as well. So uh, what we're going to be doing is we have to first scrape away two vias because there's solder resist on top of them, which means that if you try soldering to these places, you're not going to have any stick. So one of them is right over here. The second one is all the way uh, over here. And so what I'm going to do is I have a, a fine scalpel here, and I'm just going to scrape these vias. You want to be careful. You want to only scrape the via, and you don't want to be too aggressive and cut it or cut anything else or scrape anything else. But after a short bit of scraping, eventually the area will be shiny, and that means you've gotten to the copper level. Okay, so that should be good. So I'm just going to test with a little bit of solder. Yeah, and the solder sticks to it just fine now. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape away the other one, and then we're going to go ahead and start installing the quick solder board. Okay, so to do the QSB, I start by getting it positioned with a couple of anchor points. And you want to make sure that you press down on the QSB when you're doing this, because sometimes these things are not quite straight. I guess they get warped somehow, either in shipping or manufacturing, I'm not so sure. Um, and so they, if they're like that, they're not going to make good contact with some of the points, and then you're not going to have a good connection. Um, so I'm going to start with this anchor point up here, and I'm not doing a perfect job yet. I'm just trying to get everything lined up. So I want to see the pads in all of these uh, vias right here, and I do, so that looks very good. Um, so let me go ahead and tack down one or two more. And then let's do this one here. This is one of those vias I scraped up. Okay, so you can see I'm just holding down and soldering. Okay, so now uh, we're going to use quite a lot of flux, and uh, we're going to go point by point and solder these. And I'm going to leave my iron in each of these vias for some time just to make sure that the solder from the via mixes with the pad and there's actually contact, because you can't necessarily tell from up above here if you have good contact. All right, so let's get started with that. So now the mode QSB install is complete. So we're going to go ahead and take this little flex cable here. And we install it with the blue stripe facing up towards you. Just lock it in. And then we're going to go ahead and take this power cord here, plug it in right here. All right, so now I've got this little plastic shielding that comes with the kit in place. And I'm not going to, you know, totally test this out. I'm just trying to do a proof of concept just to make sure that the QSB and all the other components are soldered in correctly. Um, so this is going to go here, and we've got our mode, and um, I've installed these four feet that come with the mode kit. The smaller one goes here, and the other three that are of equivalent size go in these positions here. Uh, once I'm actually done, I'm going to remove this double-sided tape to lock it down for good, but I'm not ready for that quite yet. So we're going to go ahead and plug the flex cable here into the 21 pin Saturn port, just like so. This is gonna line up more or less right about here. And we're gonna put this in here for the external power and make sure that the external power is switched on. So again, I'm not gonna, um, you know, this is just for proof of concept, just to make sure that the installation is correct. So we're gonna go ahead and power on the system and just see if we can get to the mode splash screen. All right, so everything is plugged in, and let's give this mode a quick test.
All right, so if you get to this screen, then you know that everything is working. If it goes straight to the memory screen, then either there's an issue with the pins that you lifted, or more likely there's come some kind of problem with the quick solder board, and maybe just one or more of the points are not connected properly. Um, all right, but looks like everything worked out just fine here. Uh, it looks like I need to update the mode, so I'm going to do that off camera. And half of our install is complete. So then let's move on to the PS1 digital installation. Okay, so there's one more thing that we need to do to finish off the mode installation, and that is to clip off this peg right here. So this, this here gets in the way, and it bumps up against the mode PCB. So all we got to do is just come in with a flush cutter and just snip this off. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and get started with the PS1 digital installation. So the first order of business with that install is to remove this little port right here. This is the link port, and this is used, I think, by a very small number of Japanese games, but I don't believe any North American games use it. We need to remove it because the HDMI port is going to sit right over here, and we also need access to those pads um, for the flex cable, the very first flex cable right here, which we're going to install. All right, so easiest way to do this is with a desoldering gun, and so that's what I'm going to use. So the first flex cable that we're going to install is this one right here. This goes exactly where the link port used to be. And if you take a look at the text over here, you can see that all these flex cables tell you which side goes up. So that's really important just so you don't accidentally, you know, flip this thing around and install it backwards. You definitely don't want to do that. Um, so this one's really not bad at all. I'm just going to hold it down and, and solder all of these points into place and just make sure everything is lined up. So the next one that we're going to install goes right here. This is where the controller ports attach to the main board. So this little flex cable here is the controller flex PCB. So once this one's installed, it allows us to use a button combo and then access the main menu of the PS1 Digital and then navigate that so that we can uh, change options and settings and what have you. So this one's a little bit tougher, but still pretty manageable uh, to the naked eye and you know just holding it down like I'm doing right now with a... Uh, with a set of tweezers like this. And just like the other flex cable, you wanna use a pretty generous helping of flux just to make sure that this installation is stable and solid. Okay, so now we're getting to some more challenging flex cables. So this is the third one. This is the audio flex. So it solders onto this chip right here and <clears throat> it goes on the furthest pin to uh, the bottom here on your, on your screen. And I would say, yeah, this one is comparable in difficulty to some of the ones you might see on like say the DC digital um, or some of the other uh, digital mods that are out there. It's definitely tricky uh, because the pin spacing is tight, and then there's some components that kind of get in the way. Uh, so you definitely want to take your time with this. I recommend very strongly that if you have a magnifying lens or a microscope that you use it for this step. And I also recommend that if this becomes to be too much for you, then stop here and have a professional install it. Because if you can't get this one, then you're going to have a really hard time with the final chip, which is right over here. Um, <clears throat> otherwise, the steps are the same. You're going to use a lot of flux. And you want to go carefully pin by pin. You may have some bridges, um, but that's okay. You can always wick away that extra solder and, and clear out those bridges. So let's go ahead and just start by trying to get it tacked down. And then once it's tacked down, I'll come in with my iron and try to clean it up some more.
Okay, so I have it soldered into place. It's not perfect yet, but I do have a pretty decent sized bridge over here um, on these two or three pins right over here. But that's not a reason to panic. Um, it's something that you can address very easily. So what I'm gonna do is just add a little bit of flux to both the area and to this solder braid here. And I'm just gonna heat up that area and wick it away. There we go. Okay, so it's mostly in place. I'm gonna go ahead and use my microscope to get in a little bit deeper and just make sure that these connections are good. Like I said, I don't believe that they are. This is just a good first pass, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a more careful look at it. And then we'll be back in a second to do the final and most challenging part of the installation. Okay, so I went back and cleaned up the AudioFlex install and here it is up close and you can see that all of the pins are nice and aligned and not bridged together. Okay, so to start with doing the GPU flex, you first have to remove this small little resistor that is uh, right there next to the GPU and it's um, just in the way and so you gotta remove it really quickly with some solder. Now the next thing you've got to do is align your flex cable and it's aligned so that the leftmost pad is actually not touching the GPU, it's touching that little anchor point. And I like to start in the center um, just because it, uh, if you start on one side and you're slightly off with your alignment, then the error is just going to get worse as you move further down the flex. So it always makes sense to start in the center. And I have a fine solder tip and I'm just using like a little droplet of solder on the tip of the iron. And I'm just worried right now about tacking down the flex cable. So I'm not trying to be perfect. And uh, if there are small bridges, I'm not really concerned about that either. Right now, I'm just trying to get everything lined up and um, slowly work my way along the flex cable, going from side to side and tacking everything down. Now, it's really difficult for me to film using this microscope and work at the same time. So I'm actually going to go back off camera and check all these points again and clean it all up. But for now, I just wanted to show you the general technique that you use to get this all put together. All right, so now that everything is done and we've double checked our work to the best of our abilities, we're gonna go through the arduous task of putting this thing back together. So I've already reattached the flex cable and the power cord to the mode. You wanna kinda of hold this like so, just so that it doesn't get in the way of anything. And then we're going to set this up here like this. And yeah, with it, Sitting right here, it's not getting the, get in the way of anything, I don't believe. Just confirm that really quickly. <clears throat> All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to put these little posts here. And we're going to use that to get the PS1 digital locked into place. All right, so we can start by attaching all the flex cables. So here's our flex for the link cable. Here's our audio flex. Here's our controller flex. And finally, here's our GPU flex. So there's gonna be a little bit of adhesive over here, tucked away on the GPU flex. So we're gonna just expose that by lifting up this little pad. And we're gonna lift up the flex again. Lock it in and then just kind of push onto the adhesive and it will stick there once everything closes up. Okay, so one of the last things we're gonna do as a troubleshooting measure is just to test for any shorts on the five volt rail and the 3.3 volt rail. So I have my multimeter set up here in continuity mode, which is this icon right here. So if there is a short between the rails, if I, uh, you'll hear a solid tone like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this probe right here. This is ground. And now this little via right here is the 3.3 volt rail. And we don't have a short there. This little one here, this is for the 5 volt rail, which is used for audio. And we're good there too. All right. Uh, so let's keep going with the installation. Okay, so we're going to install this little Wi-Fi module. This is just the antenna that's used for detecting updates and downloading them to the PS1 Digital. You just plug it into this little socket right here. Okay, so I've got the PS1 Digital all hooked up and plugged in, and as you can see, everything is working great. And I just wanted to show you this really quick. So if you go into the test menu on the PS1 Digital, and that's uh, accomplished by pressing the two bottom triggers, the X and the square button, and start. And that gets you into this um, PS1 Digital test menu. And this allows you to just make sure that the connection to the DPU Flex are good. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of hearts on all of those signals. That indicates that all of those connections are solid. If there was an X on any of those, then that would indicate that there's some sort of problem. So, uh, so yeah, this installation looks like it was a success and everything seems to be running well. Um, and so yeah, that's, that's basically it for this kind of video. So if you guys like this content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this every Friday. And then of course, if you have a console that you need repaired or modified or anything like that, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.